Well, I was in the north of England uh, and took my school certificate examination up there. My parents were living in London and the first uh, I had to sign on the Labour exchange, the nearest one was in Battersea, so I went there and I said, I'm just, I've finished my school certificate, I'm waiting for the results. He said, well, don't take a job till you get that, but what do you want to be? I said, I don't know. He said, when you come back next week, tell us and we'll see what we can do about it. So I went down, told my dad, he said, tell him you want to be an engineer. So I went back next week and I said, I would like to be an apprentice at Battersea Power Station. And they said, we've been on the Battersea, the, the London Power Company don't take apprentices. Um, I waited and three weeks later I got the results and I went back and I got matriculation exemption. And they said, oh, well done, well done. Hang on a minute. Aren't you the guy who came and said he wanted to be an apprentice at Battersea? They said, well, three days ago we got a phone call from a guy in London. He said that apparently the industry was nationalised on May the 1st this year. And they've set up new things to view the fact of the war and people dying and, and they're going to expand the industry. They've decided now to take on apprentices everywhere, including Battersea. And they said, so, uh, you know, uh, we'll contact them and see how you can do. So I went back next week and um, they said, oh, uh, we've been on, uh, you can become a student apprentice. And they got me an interview virtually straight away. And I went and was the first student apprentice there, and uh, that was it. Well, when I first went to Battersea Power Station, bearing in mind that, you know, I'd just been in school and so on, I said I was blown over by it, really. And the A station was something else. You, you could eat your food off the floor in the turbine hall. A most amazing place. It just blew me over completely. In, inside the power station, if you went to the A station, the noise in the turbine hall. I mean, it was beautifully clean, but the noise, eventually, of course, you got used to it. But one of the things I found out was, particularly when I was, because I did operations at the finish, I, I did maintenance and so on and so forth. And eventually, you get to know the turbine drivers and so on, and, and they had cats for, for the mice, you know, in the basement, and, and, uh, and they got cats there. And they said that on the very rare occasions that batters that they shut down when it went quiet, the cats were going berserk. Because yeah, they, they normally were in there all the time. Amazing. <laughs> it was like going into a church. Apart from the noise, the A station, I mean, it was it was wonderful. And everything was nice and clean and modern. It was just unique. And that, that word sums it up to me, unique. It was a one-off. I'm just highly delighted that something that uh, was iconic when it was built, and it was iconic, if something was the second only to St Paul's Cathedral, it's iconic, and that really sums it up. And I'm glad that that is being preserved and long may it last. Starting at Battersea, my first impressions were the sheer complexity of the plant. It was unlike any other power station. The total capacity of Battersea at the time was the equivalent of all the other power stations in London put together. I was an assistant shift charge engineer, that is number two on shift. We were responsible for all the operations to meet the load demanded by National Grid. Power stations uh, were places that did have a tendency to have little fires from time to time because there was a, a lot of hot oil around, a lot of very hot metal. Um, when oil comes into hot metal, we have little fires. Um, underneath the turbines, the lagging gets soaked. There was an episode that Battersea became quite famous for when the launch of BBC Two took place. On the night of BBC Two, London lights started flickering. I was living at home waiting to go in on shift at Bankside Power Station that night and the, the lights were flickering, eventually went off, the television wasn't very stable, we couldn't get BBC Two and it turned out the BBC Two launch had to be postponed until the following day. The problem was a fire at Battersea Power Station, a massive fire in an underground cable tunnel, took out all the phones. A man had to go out on his bikes to call the fire brigade. 
So after that, any fire at Battersea was always regarded by the fire brigade as an ultimate grade A emergency. One night when I was working at Battersea, uh, we had a small fire underneath the turbine, fairly routine thing. Control room correctly dialed 999 and called the fire brigade in. In the meantime, we'd actually put the fire out, but the reaction from the fire brigade was to send every available appliance. Returning to Battersea Power Station now, the first impressions are how magnificent the station looks. The work that's been done on the chimneys particularly, uh, they really stand out now. It used to be called the Cathedral of Power and it's retained that status. Working at Battersea Power Station has always given me a special feeling that I can say I worked at Battersea Power Station, particularly in the days when it was on full load because everybody has heard of Battersea Power Station. They can immediately relate to you. Oh, he worked at Battersea Power Station, so he must know what he's doing. So my father actually saw the, or heard about the advertisement for a shorthand typist at Battersea Power Station. Well, I started there in 1954. I actually left in 1957 when I was pregnant with my first child was rather like um, a school, a, a classroom in one way, because we each had our own desk behind one another or in front of one another. And then we had dear Andy, who was our manager. And then we had Mr. Seymour, who was a so-and-so, who was the top man there. He'd come out and he'd sort of be a bit stern, but you just behind his back, really, we were rock quite rude. We just sort of either blow a raspberry or just laugh, which was not right really, but that's it, that's how it was, you know. In the summer, if the weather was good, we used to go up on the roof by the chimneys and have our lunch. Um, well, one day I was quite anxious because I'm not frightened of heights and I was quite anxious, I wanted to get up those chimneys. Anyway, I started to go up one and somebody in authority came and saw me and said, you must get down. So obviously I had to get down. They're supposed to be keeping those, but I think they're making them glass. Coming back to Battersea Power Station, it was really interesting. I've met some of the people um, that worked here just after me. It's good to see the power station rising again, almost from the grove. I worked at Battersea Power Station for six years, from 1963 till uh, 1970. I was an apprentice uh, to start with in the instrument department and then was a mechanic for a couple of years before I moved on to another power station in Kent. I found out about the apprenticeships because my father um, was a chef with the electricity board. He knew I was interested in engineering, so he suggested that I'd apply to the Central Electricity Board to uh, get an apprenticeship. I've always been interested in engineering. I used to have a comic called The Eagle that used to have a spread in the middle with uh, blown up diagrams of uh, mechanical devices. I used to like making things when I was younger. That's carried on throughout my life right until I was teaching uh, design and technology myself. I think one of the most difficult things I found in the apprenticeship was um, getting up in the morning because we had to start at half past seven and um, I don't know how my dad managed it but he used to get me up about six o'clock in the morning and get me breakfast and get me out to the uh, station to get the train. We used to work all over the power station. In the middle of the power station were the boilers for the two sides of the turbines and they were very uh, hot and dusty but the turbine halls were quite different. They were, they, um, were very stylish, it was an art deco style on the A station the B station, which was built afterwards, was a bit plainer because I think money was shorter after the war. So they were very impressive places. When you're an apprentice, you, you were fairly green really and, and they used to play tricks on you sometimes. You might be stripping down a, an instrument with lots of gear wheels, just like a clock really, and then when you put them back together again, uh, you might find a couple of extra gears or cogs that somebody had put there just to confuse you.
while I was an apprentice, uh, there, there was a strike at the power station and apprentices weren't allowed to go on strike, so we still came in with the managers and it was really strange to be in the power station when it was silent, it just was really eerie and ghost-like. I think Battersea Power Station is an iconic building because in its day it was the biggest power station in the country, it had um, the biggest turbines generating the electricity and not only that, its architectural elegance as well made it something special. I worked at Battersea Power Station for just over two years. About 1981 to uh, the day it closed. I was one of the last ones out the door. It's an unbelievable place. Pure size. Having been at Bankside, which was the new power station part of it, then go to Battersea. The, I think the thing that blew me away was the control room. It was absolutely massive. And the number of people that worked in it, it was unbelievable. It was used quite a lot for uh, location filming. The Meaning of Life part of that was filmed there. And uh, I was coming back from the uh, jetty on one occasion and I was confronted with this massive figure. I didn't know what it was at the time, but it turned out it was John Cleese and a load of animals. And they filmed in the, the old control room, or the, what was the, uh, the control room. I first went there in 1959 as a junior engineer, and we used to have Davis's. And the, the, the A station was absolutely immaculate. The turbine floor was, uh, I think, Italian marble. There's a lot of staff employed to clean the place. The chimneys were that high, so that they cleared the surrounding properties. Because at that time, there was a lot of uh, semi-detached and detaching terraced houses of normal height around the district. Uh, Battersea was really uh, iconic and for many years it was the uh, highest rated thermal efficiency station in the country if not the world. Battersea was a fantastic place to work. There was interesting work, varied work, being a young boy, doing your first apprenticeship, it was fascinating and it was the experience that sort of set the ground rock for the rest of my career of 41 years in the electricity supply industry. When I was at Battersea, there was lots and lots of characters who had seen lots of things, they told lots of tales, particularly about the Bank of England burning banknotes in the boilers and them not all being burnt sometimes and some being left over. You didn't see many women in the power station. Their jobs were confined to the office, secretarial, man in the telephone for the telephone exchange and in the canteen. When I joined Battersea in 1975, the A station had shut down earlier in that year, so it was only the B station that was still running. When Battersea was built, it was very, very efficient and ran continuously. But later in years, when newer power stations were built that were more efficient, of course, Battersea was getting older and uh, more worn out basically. It became more uh, expensive and ultimately it was too expensive to run and in 1983 it was shut down. What I've got in my hand here is a low pressure turbine blade from the number three turbine at Battersea Power Station. During the demolition of the power station that started in the late 1970s, a ex-operations engineer was involved with the contractors doing the demolition and while they were taking the turbine apart, he salvaged a number of these turbine blades. And I was friendly with this chap, George Hutchins, and George kindly gave me one of these blades that uh, was removed from the number three turbine. So the turbines on the A station had two cylinders with uh, turbines inside. This first turbine, the steam entered at the smaller end and the steam expanded through the turbine and came out at the rear on the larger diameter turbine blades. It then passed via these crossover pipes into the second cylinder, which you can see 
being manufactured here. And in that cylinder, you had the larger second turbine that um, expanded the steam to a much larger degree with the last row of turbine blades being at the end. And it is one of those blades that I have as a keepsake. Coming back to the power station today, it's so different. The last time I saw it inside, it was just that rotting hulk letting in water decaying away. But to see it being put to good use now and the work going on to restore it and keep it the future is fantastic. Lots of power stations get demolished, totally never to be seen again. But to save the power station, albeit in a different use, to allow people to come back and see it in the future and hopefully one day, my grandchildren hopefully will come and see it.